think Evie Oddly is the shell of the person that Evie Oddly tried to be so hard, like, five years ago. I'm in a place where I'm happy with my life, where I get to express myself, I get to try things out, I get to fail. Sometimes I get to succeed, and there are always going to be days where I'm really happy with what I've done, and days where I'm hungry for more. Hello. I wasn't expecting anyone. <laughs> Come into my home. <laughs> This is my cat, Lucky. He's the guardian of this place, so treat him with kindness and, and watch his tail. <laughs> it's all he has left. <laughs> I only really moved in like three or four months ago, but two of those I've been on the road touring, so I only have like a little bit real about this place and the rest is still just cardboard and like paper mache. I love drag because it like just forces me to do things. It forces me to like live the way I was supposed to be living. It forces me to like brush my teeth and like like shave my fingers. Yeah, I don't know. It, like in a not joke way, it just actually forces me to care about myself. It's my exercise. It's my creative outlet. It's my excuse to buy things online. Like I, I love drag. Evie Before Drag Race was just this version of me that was just so hungry to have like somebody acknowledge me for something deeper. I think it's the same thing that we all look for in life. It's like calling to the universe to find out you belong and you're like here for a reason. I wanted to be seen and felt. I haven't like met any neighbors formally, but I did get this cute note <laughs> when I got back home in my mail that was like, Hey, Miss Evie Oddly, your garden's overgrown. I can cut your bushes and your weeds. There are no grass. I'm a big gay fan, and my bestie used to live in this house. I'm glad you bought it. A gay fan, keep your garden clean. <laughs> so like everyone's reading me on it, but I think this looks pretty amazing for being off of like one of the sketchier places you can live in Denver and never having been home in it yet. I'm about to have my Martha Stewart fantasy. When Drag Race first entered my life, I started dating my first boyfriend senior year of high school and he was really into it and like told me I had to go back and like watch everything. So I started watching season one immediately and Nina changed my life. I was so blown away that there was a Denver drag queen. Cause like I was a twink. I wasn't, I wasn't even like old enough to go into clubs yet. So like the idea of being an adult gay was still this magical idea that had nothing to do with what high school life in Denver was like. To get to see Nina and like have a connection to a, a bigger world was amazing for me, especially because the second I turned 18, I started going to the one club that we had that would let us in and that's where Nina had her residency and was performing and that's when I became dedicated to like doing whatever it took to be on top of Denver drag so that I'd be ready for drag race drag. Howdy all, I'm Evie Oddly and I'm 24 years old from Denver, Colorado. I felt like going to season 11 like I needed, like I needed Drag Race to go well. I needed people to like see my artistry and I needed to like be taken seriously. I wanted my perspective to be one of the most important things because my drag, even in Denver, wasn't 
the most polished, the most expensive, the like nicest, most ladylike illusion, but I had made my name by just like experimenting and trying these radical ideas. But what the? Move over, ladies. This race just took an odd turn. Oh, wow, the circus is in town, Mary. By that point in Drag Race, when I had gotten on, we'd already had tropes about weirdos. We'd already had weirdo winners. We'd had multiple different angles, whether you're like a fashion weirdo or like an acting weirdo. We just like had had so much representation for the otherness, which is what really like sparked me to start doing drag was I wanted to represent the otherness. So I was like completely shocked when I got on with a season full of girls who were like, what? What is this alt drag? In a way it was like very satisfying to compete with these people and the bratty little kid in me was happy that at least at some points the judges were able to see what the girls clearly didn't want to. And it was nice to like meet them halfway and learn things from them that I was so resistant about too. The first time I ever brushed a wig was probably on season 11. <laughs> I would never be spooky, but bitch, would you ever be glam? You would never be glam! Don't call for me. Oh girl, I hope you're not talking to me because I'm about to send your ass back in. There's part of me that definitely went into 11 thinking I was going to win because that's the very competitive part of me that like existed when I played sports for a second, existed when I was in an art school. Like it's always been a part of me. I like competition. I think it brings out, it can bring out the best in people. But I'll also admit that like there's, there's demons in your head that are like, you aren't good enough. You are cheap. Where is Denver? Nobody gives a about your drag. That need to prove myself really drove everything, both in the positive and in the negative. I experimented so hard that I think I did things that at that point had never been done in Drag Race. But I had also like pushed myself so hard that I had pushed away the opportunity to make friends in, in the middle of a competition. I thought we were closer than that, but she wanted to um, pop off at the red couch with me. That's what bothered me. And that's but why I I'm thought we Pissed is not, because I'm it literally matter. not. I did not pop off at you. Okay, I literally but told I'm you telling you, I'm telling truth. you did. Okay. It's funny that we fought on the season because we also really connected. Vanjie is just like such a good, pure soul. Like people love her for being like this personality, this character, but like who she is is just like so good and so vulnerable that I still like obviously get teared up thinking about her and like the experiences we've had. So like when we were fighting, it's cause like we uh, we weren't we weren't seeing eye to eye like people who care about each other do. But I think Vanjie and I like see each other on a deeper level that I'm glad made some good TV for a second, but makes for a better friendship in real life. I look back at my runways with like so much pride, it's especially because that was all of me and all of my friends in, in my daughter's garage, just like hot gluing, trying, not knowing at all what this experience was gonna be like, if they were even gonna get seen, if I was gonna use them, if it would work. That jellyfish is like one of the first things that I ever conceived of that I was like, oh, I have to get on Drag Race to show this. And so to get to show that so early on, I was like, that's right, bitches, I'm here. This is my original beautiful idea and it is eating up in ways that people haven't seen before. I liked how my brain interpreted those challenges. There might be some things that are hard to look back on on season 11, but those runways, I'm like, I'm glad you went there. That was smart of you. Oh, oh, those are all of your awards. Just trying to get rid of them on eBay since I haven't had a role in a good five or 6,000 years. Aren't you in The View? I'm not happy with my Snatch Game performance from season 11, but like it also, I won that episode. Like I didn't win the challenge clearly, but I, I won that episode. 
I got to showcase one of the things that, especially at that time, brought me so much joy and that I knew I could do and that just like felt so good. There was this like immaculate feeling. I mean, I can't speak for Brooke. I still didn't know if they were gonna save one of us, if they were gonna save both. Like it, it just felt like so much energy had shifted in the room. Like RuPaul and the judges all had like so much appreciation, were so loud. The girls behind us were blown away and so loud. The camera crews, the doors were shaking, like lights were falling out. It, it just, it felt like there was something monumental and that we got to showcase, like, some of the fiercest, like, performance you'll, I think you'll ever see on Drag Race. You can cast as many flippin' skips as you want, but good luck getting a moment like that. The winner of RuPaul's Drag Race, America's next drag superstar is... I still don't, like, I still don't know how to feel about it. All these years later, like, it's amazing and it's wild and is this, like, is this real? And, like, you did it. All your hard work has paid off. Now what are you gonna do? What's the future look like? Are you going to live up to it? Uh, there's just so much that, like, comes with it that I had never thought about. And, like, best I can relate it to is, like, as a theater kid at the end of any production when you're like, wow, I did it. Like, not only did I play a role, but like I played a role and it was a good role and the audience clapped and I made it through the whole thing. And now people might even know me for this, this, this play, but like, what do I do now? <laughs> Who am I? Where do I go? And it's weird because that's also at the peak of when the public like knows you the best. It's like, oh my God, bitch! I wrote it for you this year, I love you so much! And you're like, who is the me that you love? <laughs> wow. <laughs> I've been working for this like my entire life, even before I knew this is what I was working towards. And I can't wait to spread some art around the world and make the children try something scary and new. The thing that I'm the most proud of from season 11 is just like having cemented some sort of legacy. And I was talking about how weird I found it that the girls treated me like their first time seeing alternative drag. But it was nice to see like some more of that door opened up on Drag Race to the point where now there are fewer girls getting critiques of like, you do alt drag, you're doing such other drag. I'm not solely responsible for any of that but I did help chip away at it a little bit. It looks like I got all my looks back from press week. It's a trip seeing all of this stuff from press week because that was like a really quick blur for me. The amount of things that we did in one week and like the kinds of opportunities that we got this time around were just like radically different than what I had experienced before. Like doing shoot for Vogue and, and getting a window at Saks Fifth and, and at the Empire State Building being shot and like being on The View. It was very affirming and it was like a nice reminder that like even if Drag Race sometimes feels like this niche thing, like if you're a superstar, you are a superstar. <laughs> <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> Don't mind me. I just even the odds. The biggest thing that made me say yes to All Stars 7 is that I was so proud of the visual work I had put into my season, but I wasn't like necessarily thrilled with the fact that I don't think people ever got to see me happy or having fun or just like chilling because I was so 
invested in the competition and I knew that the vibe was going to be different going back into an All-Stars because nobody got eliminated on All-Stars 7 like we experienced so much with each other and we got to really share in those experiences together one last time coming back and presenting As I get older, my body is something that I have to be so much more in tune with, especially as like my condition is not going anywhere, like I'm, I'm not ever going to get better per se, but I try not to let it weigh on me too much, it's just there are places where I will always have constant reminders and like some days are really good days and some days I like have trouble like opening doors or like a random part of my body will just be dislocated for no reason and I have that reminder that like oh you're not the invincible person you were like 10 years ago, 15 years ago. For me it's just like giving me more of an appreciation f for what I'm still capable of. Performing in Denver is so different now because I feel like I've already proven everything I needed to prove. So I always tell myself, like, I'm gonna take it easy. Like, you're a rock star. You don't have to do anything. This is your home. These are your people. They're gonna love you. Just take it easy. And then I always do way too much because of it. Because they're like, oh my god! And I'm like, okay, well then you're getting a triple backflip. Like, I always do the absolute most here. We are headed to X-Bar to perform in Black Diamonds, which is like the, the performance showcase for Denver Black Pride. Juneteenth weekend, we're celebrating being queer, we're celebrating being black, you know, we're celebrating all of, all of the things that I grew up feeling othered for. And now we're finding a space for it all, so I'm excited. It's, it's a trip to come back home and perform because it was my dream to be able to take what I did here around the world. And so to have achieved that and, and get to come home to the audiences that built me and the stages that I started on, it's like full circle. It's a place I never, never could have dreamed I'd come back to and feel this way about. Oh! Can I, can, I, can I be a part of the movie? No! <laughs> Did you say no? Yes! <laughs> hey sis! Oh, she you. made it! Oh. I'm in your city! <laughs> yeah! Oh my god! I, that's, okay, just now registering to me, is that like here? <laughs> that, that you're home? <laughs> yeah! Wow! Hi y'all! I'm going to be critical of myself. I'm never going to be 100% pleased with who, what, where, when, why I am where I'm at, but that there's always something to aspire to bigger and better and beyond that. I'm, I'm extremely proud that Drag Race will be a part of my legacy. It, it's something that's been not only monumental for me and for my life even before I got on, but it's also been something that if we have historians in a hundred years, they'll look back on and be like, wow, look how this one weird little reality television show helped pivot so much acceptance of queer culture in the mainstream. And then hopefully they'll have like some more asterisks by my name and like what I did beyond Drag Race. Hey, it's Michelle Visage. Do you want gay shit? 
Check out RuPaul's Drag Race YouTube channel and hit subscribe.